Today's topic is 3.3, Continuity of Functions, found on pages 126 to 139 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is to demonstrate understanding of limits and continuity. And our lesson objectives today, number one, to learn what is meant by a continuous function, and to learn what the three different types of discontinuities are and how to find the location of these discontinuities. So a continuous function is one in which you could sketch without ever removing your pencil from the paper. So a couple examples here. Um, functions that you're aware of, that would be a continuous function, something like a parabola. Um, a parabola, you could draw the whole thing without removing your pencil from the paper. Um, other things would be maybe like even a sine function. Um, you know, you could continue drawing that onwards. And those are all continuous functions. But today we're talking about um, more discontinuity, so things that make functions not continuous. So in order for a function to be continuous at a specific x value, which we're going to call that x value a, the following criteria must be met. Number one, the limit as x approaches a from the positive side has to equal the limit as x approaches a from the negative side. And we've talked about limits before. And that also has to equal f of a. So let's just take a look at a couple examples here. Our first example, you can see that the limit as x approaches, in this case, it looks like it's the letter b, as x approaches b from the left-hand side and the limit as x approaches b from the right-hand side, they both reach the same number, but that function doesn't actually exist in that place. So that means, in this case, um, the first two uh, conditions have been met, but the third condition does, is not met. f of a, or in this case, f of b, does not actually exist. Our second example, um, when we appro approach x, from the positive side of a, which would be from this side, we get to a height of two, negative two, or sorry, positive two. And when we approach it from the negative side of a, we get to a height of one. So in this case, that's not a continuous function. And you can see that these things are, are definitely not continuous because in this case, there's a hole. And this place is, in this case, we, there's something which we call a jump or a gap. And finally, in the final case, as we approach, um, this height right here from the left hand side we get to the same height as if we approach it from the right hand side but in this case f of a or in this case f of b is at a totally different height so again another example of why this thing is not continuous so there are three different ways in which a function can be discontinuous the first one is called an infinite discontinuity and this is where the limit of the graph approaches infinity or i guess we could say or negative infinity and otherwise, we know this as a vertical asymptote. And we know that the location of these asymptotes can be found by looking at the factors in the denominator of a rational function. So um, if we look at this rational function that has a, a vertical asymptote, say, at x equals 3, um, and the function looks something like that, we know that this is a infinite discontinuity because this is what kind of breaks up this graph. It allows us to to not actually draw this thing without lifting our pencil off the paper. Our second type of discontinuity is a removable discontinuity. And this is what we've been calling a hole in the graph. And we know that this is where the factor, the numerator and the denominator cancel each other out. And the coordinate for the y value of this point can be found by substituting your x value into your function after you have canceled out the common factor. And we've actually seen these functions when we were doing limits in the last couple of lessons as well. So our final type of discontinuity is called the jump discontinuity. And this is where the height of a graph changes or jumps at a specific x value. And these are usually, usually found, sorry, in piecewise functions and absolute value functions. And you've actually seen one of these as an example yesterday. So the example here says, determine if the following functions are continuous. If it is not continuous, identify the value or the values of, of x at which the discontinuity, discontinuity occurs, sorry, and classify the discontinuity. So our first one here is the absolute value of x squared minus 3x plus 2. And we saw something quite similar to this yesterday when we were looking at the limit of this sort of thing. But we know that we can um, factor this thing into x minus 2 and x minus 1. And it would be the absolute value of both. And that's over x minus 2. Now, when we did the limit of this thing as x approached uh, 2 from the right-hand side and when x approaches 2 from the, uh, the left-hand side, we found yesterday that the two heights are different. And if the two heights are different, that's an example of a jump discontinuity. So we know that there's a jump discontinuity at x equals 2. And if we cancel these two things out, we're left with just the absolute value of x minus 1. And the absolute value functions, there's no discontinuities there because we know that an absolute value function kind of just looks like a, like a v. 
So there's only one type of discontinuity and that's at x equals two in this case. Now in this case, we've got a piecewise function. So once we see piecewise functions, we need to check to see if there's gonna be a jump. And there's gonna be a jump possibly at x equals two. And the way to check to see the, if there is a jump is to see if we get different heights when we plug in two to the, both these uh, pieces of this function. So if I plug in a two into this function, I get a value of three. If I plug a two into this function, I get negative three on the top over negative one. And so that also equals three. So there's no jump discontinuity because the height as I went from uh, the, this first function and the height of the second function actually are the same height, so it's continuous there. However, we know that there is an infinite discontinuity at x equals three because this is where there would be a vertical asymptote. And there's no holes in this function because we don't have um, a factor at the top of a function uh, canceling out with the factor in the bottom of the function. So in summary, there are three different types of discontinuities. There's an infinite discontinuity, which we know is a vertical asymptote. There's a removable discontinuity, which we know as a hole. And there's a jump discontinuity, and that's when the, um, the height of a function may uh, jump up or down. So for example, this is a, an example of a jump discontinuity where the height at this very point, we'll call this x equals four maybe, um, the height jumps from a positive value down to a negative value, and that's a jump discontinuity. The location of discontinuities can be found by examining the equation of a function, and we just went over how you can find each of those, or just by looking at the graph of the function if you have the graph in front of you. So our assignment is on pages 146 to 148. Uh, good luck, and we'll see you in class.